This video is for a woman that wants to be a good wife and you desire to have a better relationship with your husband. I'm creating a short series about how to become a Titus 2 wife. If you haven't watched part one, stop and then go back and watch part one and then come back to this video. Before I go into my tips, I want us to read a scripture, Titus 2, verse 3 through 5. And it says, Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderous or addicted to too much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled in prayer, to be busy at home, to be kind and to be subject to their husbands so that no one will malign the word of God. As a middle-aged woman, my responsibility is to teach the young women how to be good wives. And it's not that I know everything about being a good wife, but I have learned a lot throughout my years. I was 21 when I got married and there was so much that I needed to learn about how to be a good wife. Being that I was raised in a single parent home, I didn't know anything about how to be a good wife. How I learned to be a good wife is by listening to the Holy Spirit and paying attention to my intuition. In order to be a Titus to wife, one thing that you don't want to do is to be a gossiper, minding other people's business slandering, tearing down other people's names. And some people think that it's okay to gossip if it's the truth. But even if it's the truth, we're not supposed to do that kind of thing. If anything, we're supposed to be peacemakers, not confusion starters. Paul also teaches that we should be productive. If you are a career wife and mom, be productive on your job. Do what you're supposed to do and even Go an extra mile. Be an example for other women at your job. If you are a housewife, be productive. Stay busy. And not just stay busy, but you want to stay busy doing the right things while you are at home. I've been a housewife now for four years. Right before I lost my job, I started desiring to be a housewife again. And I remember making a commitment to God. I told him that if he took me off of my job, how that I would be more involved in ministry. So I'm the praise and worship leader at my church. I spend time throughout the week practicing. I'm also the musician at my church. So I spend time throughout the week practicing on the keyboard, coming up with new songs, learning how to play new songs. I try to make sure that I am available if my husband needs me to do any type of administrative work at the church. I keep my house clean. I iron my husband's clothes. And I'm also just started my own business. I coach and I mentor Christian wives and moms. So right now I'm able to live my life just to glorify God and work in ministry full time. I exercise. I read. I make sure that I do productive things on a daily basis. In order to be a Titus to wife, you're going to have to respect your husband, treat him well, show good deeds towards your husband. And you may say, well, my husband, he's not respectable to me. If you want to receive respect, first you have to give it. Once you start giving it, you will get it in return. And that also goes even with your children. If you want them to respect you, you have to respect them. I am a firm believer that you get back what you put out. And the reason why I believe that is because it is manifested in my life now. It is very important to me to be respected so I make sure that I respect others in return. To be a Titus to women, you're going to have to love your husband and your children. Love doesn't come overnight. I didn't really realize how to love or what love is until I went through some things personally in my marriage. It was like the more trials that my husband and I went through in our marriage, the closer we became. And that is what built our love for each other. Love isn't self-seeking. It's not selfish. It's not all about what you can get or what he can do for you. We got to learn to have patience with our husband. Love is kind. We have to learn how to be kind towards our mates. 
Love is long suffering. If you love someone, you are going to be willing to suffer some things. Things are not going to always be perfect. Things are not going to always feel good. When you love someone, you are willing to give up yourself. Love doesn't keep up with your mate's wrongs. It covers and protects. Self-control. You got to learn how to have self-control when it comes to spending money. It's not good to go out and buy everything that you desire because if you do, you are going to go broke eventually. But you do want to learn how to be content, to be thankful with what you have. Not to always look over at what your neighbor has, to be thankful with what we have. We have to have self-control over our mood swings. And um, I used to have some huge issues in that area when it was a certain time of the month. That was like the only time to where I was to snap and just lose control because I had a problem with hormonal imbalance. I would get irritated very easily, short patient. It got so bad until I knew that I had to do something. I didn't want to take medication because I try not to take medication unless I just have to because I don't like the side effects and the things that it does to your body in the long run. So I went to a herb store and I found some vitamins that's supposed to help hormonal imbalance. So I started taking those vitamins and they actually worked. But whenever I would run out, I noticed I was having those issues again. So I couldn't keep purchasing the vitamins because they were very expensive and I just couldn't afford them. So finally, I made up my mind that how that I didn't like the person that I had become and that I should have control over my moods, even if I have issues with a hormonal imbalance. So I started praying to God about it. And in the meantime, what I started doing is being conscious of my behavior, how the way I interact with my husband, with my children. And eventually I stopped having those mood swings. And it was only because that I stopped making excuses for myself and I focused more on my behavior. And as time went by, I didn't have that issue anymore. I know you may not want to hear this, but you're going to have to submit to your husband. A couple of years ago, God started dealing with me about my attitude towards my husband. He told me that I needed to learn how to submit to him and that I needed to respect him more. And he also was telling me how that being that my husband is a pastor, in order for the members to be able to follow his leadership, his direction, I had to be first partakers of it. He had to be able to be the head of his home. So I prayed and I asked God to help me to transform my mind. And I also repented. And I can say that ever since I start trying to submit to my husband, it transformed our relationship. I know it's hard to submit to your husband. And the reason why is because in the Bible, when God put a curse on Adam and Eve from eating from the tree of knowledge, one of her curses had to do with her not wanting to submit to her husband. Genesis, the third chapter in the 16th verse, your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. The reason why it is so hard for us to submit to our husband is because it's a part of the curse. It's like we're resisting his authority and we want to rule over him instead of him ruling over us. And you guys, that is not God's will. So if you want to have a good relationship with your husband, we have to live our life according to God's will in the way that he designed it. He designed it to where the man leads the woman and the woman is the man's helper. So once we start living our lives the way that God designed for us to live, that is when everything will fall in line. So if you want to have a good relationship with your husband, you're going to have to submit to him and allow him to lead you. So when I look at my marriage now, I am amazed of how we were a couple of years ago in the way that we are now. And I know it's only because I'm striving to be a Titus II wife. 
I have a question for you. If you're not a Titus 2 wife, what is stopping you? Are you willing to make the changes in your life to become a Titus 2 wife? If you need help in becoming a submissive wife, book a consultation with me. My information will be in my description box. If you like my message and you just want to support me, subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the notification bell. Thank you for tuning in and make sure to stay tuned for the next upload. Bye.